Hi everyone, Alexandra Bello here with Miami Web Fest for 2022. And this is the interview sessions. We hope that you are enjoying each one of our official selections that we're choosing to interview. I wanna introduce you to Kenneth Chong. He is uh, my first interview, but definitely not your first one watching. Uh, he's the producer, director, and scriptwriter for Tiny Gardens. Uh, Kenneth has been in the industry for over 20 years. He has 20 years of experience. And I could see that when I watched the content. It was absolutely beautiful. And uh, Tiny Gardens is a documentary style, little episodes that bring you a lot of value. Kenneth, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> Very good. Thank you. So um, tell me a little... Tell me and the audience a little bit about yourself, about your um, film experience and your artistry. Sure, no problem. Uh, well, I've been around for a while, <laughs> to say the least. Um, I started uh, working from the ground up, from as production assistant all the way to where I am right now. Uh, did spend a lot of time um, learning the ropes, um, anything from technical positions to uh, content, right? To writing, to uh, aiding, to um, finally directing. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's been a joyous ride. Um, this, this is the only thing I know how to do. So if I stop doing this, I've got no idea what I'm going to do next. <laughs> oh, very, very nice. So how do you feel, uh, Kenneth, about... Um being one of the official selections for Miami Web Fest with Tiny Gardens? Well, actually, we're really grateful because I think Miami Web Fest, well, I'm pretty sure, Miami Web Fest is our last um, run for the uh, season um, for Tiny Garden. We had an amazing year um, since 2021. And, uh, you know, nothing better than Miami Web Fest to wrap up everything. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was created in 2021 during the pandemic, I, I see. And um, why, why, why were you inspired to create Tiny Gardens? And, um, you know, what was the reason or the motivation behind it? Good question. So and what is Tiny um, Gardens about? <clears throat> So people get an idea. Okay, this is going to be a long one then. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. So Tiny Gardens was uh, created and filmed in 2020 actually, but uh, edited and pushed out during 2021. Mm -hmm. um, so this is in the midst of uh, the pandemic, the lockdown, and we didn't know what to do, right? Mm -hmm. Because as filmmakers, I think, a lot of times when we're locked up uh, with not much freedom, uh, we're stuck, uh, there's no creative output, we can't shoot, we can't film. And uh, we were really scared uh, for a while because not just as our career is frozen, right? But also at the same time, um, the people in Singapore, um, we're a very, very tiny little country, right? Singapore. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't have small little country with a lot of people. So 5 million people, uh, to just give you an idea, the size of it, like, you know, if you drive from east to west is about an hour. So tiny little country, right? And we all live in apartments. So we're so small, we all have to live in apartments. So you say more than 80% of us live in tiny apartments. And we don't have gardens. We hardly have any idea of how to grow our own um, even flowers or, or trees or whatever like that. So when we're being locked up, I think um, we lost the sense of being part of nature and uh, a lot of people were feeling trapped, were feeling uh, disconnected. Um, so part of the idea of creating tiny gardens was to, okay, we don't know actually how long we're going to be stuck like this, back and forth and stuff. Part of the idea was really to take 
nature and find a way to bring it into our homes, right? And some people don't know how to do it. So that's why part of the documentary is about showing people how they could do it, right? So whether you are, um, you like to just uh, decorate, use plants as decorations, uh, as a decor, right? Or you want to make your own uh, little urban farm right at home, you could. So that's also part of it. Uh, but also at the same time, because we're living in tiny apartments, um, how do we bring plants in? Because it's not like you can just put it anywhere in the apartment and it can grow, right? So part of it has got to do with design as well, right? Interior design as well. So we combine all these three things, right? No matter which idea you have, whether it's to decorate or just a hobby, um, to anything like that, to wanting to grow your own food, or uh, to even come up with an idea like, okay, why my plants always die? Oh, you know, where to put it, right? So that kind of answers some of the questions, right? Um, but the idea was really to shoot this as beautiful as I could because I think people lost and it was disconnected with nature outside. So we're all trapped in apartments. We have very little opportunity to go outside, right? And to go to the park and all. Uh, not for everyone. I think there are some people who, who could, but I think uh, for some, like the older folks, who are more vulnerable to the pandemic um, would have to stay at home, right? Mm -hmm. So we're hoping to bring nature in to them through watching this or something like that, right? Or for people who needed to find a new hobby, <laughs> uh, anything like that, but also to go to parts of Singapore that people did not know that exist, right? And to tell stories of all these different people who are good and have a relationship with uh, plants, right? Mm -hmm. And let them uh, teach you. But first, uh, we tell you a little story about them. So uh, I thought it was a little bit different from uh, regular plant shows that you see uh, a lot elsewhere. Uh, we focus heavily on um, the profile, their story, okay. their relationship with plants. Uh, it was a little bit meta, so it was a little bit philosophical as well. And almost like poetry, we wanted to, to have that idea. And then, then we let them create and you see step by step how, how they make uh, their own gardens within their apartments. Uh, and yeah um yeah and and well i said like this was the last stop for us um because we've been really really fortunate um and we just got news that tiny gardens is um getting some kind of distribution so uh we're happy about that um uh -huh. still no second season yet but uh we're hoping for it um because i think Besides uh, Singapore, there's more story to tell, of course. So besides Singapore, I think uh, Japan is another, well, it's not so much of a tiny country, but there are a lot of people living in apartments, little small confined spaces, and still they manage to uh, create wonderful gardens uh, inside of their spaces. And I think there's a lot of stories to tell from there. Yep. Of course. And you said that you are, in every episode, you're combining three things. So my question to you is, so we can summarize for the audience, what are the three things that you combine in each episode that they can get when they watch your content? And also, how many episodes do you have published or streaming out there that they can watch? Okay, so there's three types of profiles that you, you would get to know in every episode. One is a botanical designer. So these are people who do things like from, I um, oh, can't remember now, uh, but like a, 
like they create like flowers out from uh, uh, other kind of plants. They create like uh, little uh, tanks of plants living inside them, uh -huh. right? Um, they use dry flowers to create a really amazing installation of sort, right? So it's a range of things, a range of different kind of designers working with uh, botanical materials, right? So that's one type. The second type you will see is these are your edible gardeners. So they, they, they create, well, they don't create, but they, they show us how they plant uh, different types of um, produce, right? Uh, like bean sprouts, uh, local produce that's sing very Singaporean, right? Uh, that's the second type, edible gardeners. The third type are uh, interior designers and architects, but these are interior designers and architects that um, they've worked on really big projects, but you know we get to go into their homes actually, <laughs> and um, they have a very very special relationship with um, plants because whenever they design for a place, they have plants in mind. I think that's rare, right? Because when anyone think about building anything like architects or uh, interior designers, I think plants is not always a big consideration as part of the design. So yeah, these three different things. Uh, five episodes. Five episodes, uh-huh. And how long are the episodes? Because um, I think they are five minutes long or are they longer? Oh, they're longer. Uh, they are about hmm, 10 minutes mm. odd long, yeah. yeah. So, so you basically see these three elements in every episode, in every 10 minute episode. Yeah, so maybe about three minutes or so or more for each um, each profile. Very good, very good. And um, I, people can watch all of this, but how many episodes did you say are out there? Five, five episodes. And they can um, watch them right now or are they? Are they still being kept private for festivals? They are now kept private for festival because we uh, we are getting distribution. <laughs> Got it. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Good news and, for us. So. And then you will, on your social media, right? On your social media, on Instagram, you will um, share what, what, uh, like what people can do to go watch your episodes like, of course yeah of course. what what platform you're being distributed on but yeah. um i want to commend you because i definitely saw the value of the production and so i started much. watching it in order i didn't you know run to the credits right away but when i went to the credits i realized that it was a full-blown production it had so many crew members in it and i realized I can see the value because, you know, you had at least a head of department for every valuable department, every uh, pertinent department when you are creating a feature film, when you're creating something very professional. But even if it's a 10 minute episode, you still need all of those people in their positions. So yeah. I can see the value uh, definitely in the content. Yeah. For sure. I think we went with as big of a team as we could because pandemic and we couldn't bring more people out actually <laughs> we wanted more but we couldn't because of the the difficulties right and the challenges but um the good the good thing is that um we wanted everyone to participate and having an opportunity to um be able to create something special yeah one thing that i also love about your about your content is that you are teaching people so it's yeah. kind of like a like a blend of a documentary at the beginning and then it becomes a tutorial and yeah. then it becomes a little bit about an editorial so it's like a another three in one type of vision of your delivery of the content which is great yeah, yeah i felt that it was quite important to be able to do that because i think 
we wanted the audience to have some takeaway, right? Yeah. Like you can watch something, you can enjoy it, you can enjoy the story of the the profile. But I think what was important that you 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 get something and you can ah, I maybe can do that. I can try that, I can do that at home and see how I fare. <laughs> and I think that was important, um, especially uh during a time when everyone is trapped, right? But um yeah, I think um as much as possible, we would love for people to um get their hands dirty uh and see whether they have some green fingers. Very good. And a lot of people do have green fingers. I yeah. have been gardening myself lately and nice. I, I do outside gardening. I have like a backyard, a oh, backyard and it takes like 30 minutes a day just watering because it is yeah like, wow yeah and i have to get my sprinkler uh system installed and going because this is lucky you <laughs> yeah yes um I'm, I'm very blessed about that but i do want to um also tell you that i enjoyed very much the transitions oh thank you that was brilliant um was that your idea of of doing movement transitions between one scene to the next yeah I think we spend a lot of time thinking about because I think in Singapore a lot of people they or anywhere else actually for that matter mm -hmm. uh, people who are afraid of gardening always find it troublesome mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and we try our best to create when you watch this it's supposed to make you feel calm <laughs> it's supposed to make you feel easy to watch right and so that you don't actually have that oh that looks difficult or like ah i'm not sure if i can relate to that um yeah it's supposed to be as easy and pleasing so that you you kind of like oh maybe i can do that right yeah yeah like you had for example the gentleman like put his hand here and then in the next scene he's putting the hand here starting the next scene and it definitely creates a much smoother transition mm -hmm. like that's definitely an artistry to be able to create like that's very uh, good directing right there when you are able to connect all the scenes and make it seem like a flow like a very um, smooth flow and it was Thank looking you. very cinematic uh, I enjoyed the, I'm hoping <laughs> yeah no hoping. I enjoyed the cinematic look of it and also the coloring was very, um, very uh, delightful to me. Like the col the color correction, the the color, uh, what do you call it? Color scheme or color palette that you went for was definitely very beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Yeah, we do our best. We do our best. <laughs> very nice. I also wanted to ask you two last questions before we close Please. the interview. Tell me a little bit about Singapore. Yeah, for sure. Well, like I say, it's a small little country. Um, it's a city state. Uh, we live in very cramped, tiny apartments, but we are very blessed at the same time. Uh, Singapore is a place uh, not very known for natural disasters. So um, we're very blessed not to be encountering anything so far. Um, but we're also uh, at the heart of Asia. Um, two hours away from Thailand, uh, two hours away from uh, Indonesia, right? Uh, four hours away from Hong Kong and like um, maybe, oh, even five hours away from Australia, actually. So, you know, um, we could get to anywhere around the region very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think um, while we are small, um, it also lets us... Um, have the courage to go out there and see new things right and experience uh new things so singapore is um is great in that sense right um and also um i would say it's a great melting pot singapore um we have uh all kinds of people uh, just in my neighborhood <laughs> you know it, it feels kind of i mean just the different types of people that we see it feels like like New York, right? Where you see so many different kinds of people. But at the same time, I think um, even though there's so many different people, there's a lot of tolerance. 
uh, from everyone because we're culturally different as well. Um, and it's delightful to be able to see and experience so many different cultures, um, taste so many different kind of food. That's uh, it's, it's wonderful. We've got a little India. We've got a Chinatown, of course. Uh, we've got a, even like a anything. Yeah, a little Malay uh, a, a kampong area, right? Mm -hmm. So there's so many different kinds of uh, culture to experience mm -hmm. and we celebrate everyone, uh, every different culture as well. So different holidays for different occasions and I think it just makes it a very vibrant place to be in. Um, yeah. And really wow. thank you, of course, that uh, we've got good system here. That is wonderful. You have definitely sold me on your country. I'm definitely going. Uh, one of these days, maybe next year, I will be traveling. To good. Me. Please give me a buzz. Yes. Yes. Same here when you guys come to Miami. Yeah. Maybe next year you come uh, for what you're working on next for film yeah. festivals. And talking about what you're working on next, why don't you tell us a little bit about Camp Up Studio and what you're working on next? Oh, thank you. So Camp Up Studio uh, will be turning 10 next year. Um, so I've this is my little baby. Um, we started small, uh, doing different things. And uh, now I think, uh, well, not big yet, but mm -hmm. I think what we've done is that um, we've created a nice little team, family, you might say. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're doing different series out there right now. Um, we're actually working on a new what series. What type of series? <laughs> Good question. Um, so we are actually doing three series this year. Mm -hmm. So if you can tell uh, me like a little summary about each, like that. Sure. One of it is a uh micro comedy, micro. So it's about a minute and a half, five episodes, right? A minute and a half each. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, par local paranormal creatures, but put in very very current um situation so for example there is uh Pontiana, which is like a female vampire in a local context uh goes online dating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's um one of it so the next one that is coming out which i'm really excited about is a series uh, the title i can tell you of course is called give me back my news mm -hmm. so it's about two young boys who got uh, love scam right and got their news uh, stolen from them and uh, they're coming together and trying to find their news and uh, they team up and mm -hmm. to try to get their news back yeah mm -hmm. so five episodes as well Very uh, cool. and about 10 minutes running time each um, we are actually in Post production for that right now, and the third series that we are creating is called uh, Mini Mart. This one is um uh, about two young adult who go through a couple of uh online challenges, uh, only to realize that uh they have sunk in too deep. So it's more dramatic. So Give Me Back My News is a little bit of a comedy, action, adventure, mm -hmm. heist kind of mm -hmm. series. Uh, Mini Mart is more of a dramatic um, action trailer kind of thing. Yeah. Very nice. Well, you yeah. know, I, I congratulate you for the things that you're making happen. And Thank this you. series, Tiny Garden, is done in like it's done in production. You're not producing any more seasons. I'm hoping, right? So, uh, so I'm hoping that, um, well, if anyone is listening, <laughs> I'm hoping that um, give us a chance to tell more stories. Uh, maybe a tiny gardens in Japan, right? Uh, nice. Or maybe a tiny gardens even in uh, Australia could be or anywhere else in Asia 
I think. Because you don't mm -hmm. want to do that in Singapore anymore? I think there are stories left in Singapore, but I think before we come back, I think it's always nice to give it a bit of uh, space mm -hmm. and time mm -hmm. for that industry to grow and mature mm -hmm. so that we can see the next wave of creators and artists, right? Uh, so it's a good time to go explore, see other things, and then come back again and like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> I did not expect that. That is true because he has other plans, different mm -hmm. countries, other architectures inside the homes. So yeah. it's definitely a different vibe. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Very and I think nice. it'll be most enjoyable. Yeah. Very nice. Well, thank you so much, Kenneth, for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, for your time too. Yes, of course. I want to rem remind everyone that Kenneth uh, and Tiny Garden are on Instagram, Tiny Garden Studio. So make sure to follow them. And make sure to follow us as well, Miami Web Fest, on Instagram. We are also going to be pumping up our new YouTube channel with these interviews. So make sure to go on YouTube and like our interviews, follow us, subscribe, and follow everywhere. Thank you, Kenneth. Kenneth you. has Tiny Gardens, okay? Web series, he's one of the official selections. So make sure that when you come to the festival, you look for his content. You can go to miamiwebfest.com and you can find our schedule there and all kinds of information about the festival. No I problem. Bello, and Thank it's you. a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Bye-bye.